Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about conditional probability. And by that I mean the probability of events if we have some additional information that restricts the set of possible results. Let's discover the maths. Consider the experiment of randomly throwing a die and the event A get even, which is 2, 4, 6. The probability of A is the number of favorable cases, which is 3, over the total number of possible cases, 6, which is, which simplifies to a half. Now suppose whoever rolls the die looks at the result and gives us a clue. They tell us that the result is greater than 3. Now we've got a different situation, because knowing that the result is greater than 3, the possible cases are 4, 5, or 6. And of these, the favorable cases of get even are 4, 6. The probability of getting an even in these circumstances is 2 over 3. If we call B the event that's occurred, this new probability is called the probability of A conditional on B. The vertical line is read conditional on. Or the probability of A if B has previously occurred. In the case we've just seen, this probability is two-thirds. In general, if we consider a random experiment, with sample space E and two events A and B, we can define the probability of A conditional on B as the probability of the intersection, that is the probability of A intersected by B, divided by the probability of the second event, the probability of B. We can interpret the expression referring to the previous example as B has occurred. The possible cases are reduced by the results of B. So the favorable cases for A, as B has also occurred, are A intersection B. It's important to note that when considering the probability of A conditional on B, we're changing the random experiment because since B has occurred, the new sample space is B. So the probability of A conditional on B isn't associated with an event in our random experiment. A conditional on B isn't considered by itself. Only that value is considered, the probability of A conditional on B. Thinking about conditional probabilities is very useful and lets us obtain important results such as the total probability theorem, Bayes' theorem, and so on. Now, suppose that A and B are independent events. The probability of A if B isn't influenced by whether B has occurred or not, so is the same as the probability of A. On the other hand, we know that the probability of A conditional on B is the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of the second event. So, equating the two values, we obtain that the probability of A is the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. Moving PB to the other side, we obtain that when A and B are independent events, the probability of A intersection B is the probability of the product, an expression that we already know and is defined by the two independent events A and B. Let's look at an experiment to understand conditional probability better. Consider the random experiment of throwing three dice and let E be the sample space. Since we have six possibilities for each die which combine with the results of the other dice, the set of all the results, the cardinal of E, is six cubed. Our random experiment is made up of independent random experiments in each of which the results are equiprobable. Therefore, we can apply the Laplace rule. Now let's think about a specific combination of events. Event A is that we get 5 twice, and event B is that we get 5 on the first throw. 
the probability of B conditional on A is the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of the second event, A. For event A, getting 5 exactly twice we have as possible results, getting 5 on the first and second throws but not on the third, getting 5 on the first and third throws but not on the second, and getting 5 on the second and third throws but not on the first. So, here we have five possibilities. Here five more, and here five more, giving 15 possible results in all for A. As for B intersected with A, we need to get five on the first throw, and two fives in total, so that includes the first two cases from above, a total of 10 favorable cases. If we now calculate the probability of B conditional on A, the probability of the intersection is the number of favorable cases, 10, divided by the number of possible cases, 6 cubed, and we divide this by the probability of A, which is the number of favorable cases, 15, divided by the possible cases, which is 6 cubed. The 6 cubed factors cancel out, and we're left with 10 over 15, which simplifies to 2 over 3. Another way to calculate the probability of B conditional on A is to reason directly. We know the possible cases corresponding to A are 15, and the favorable cases that include B are 10. So again, we get 2 over 3. And we can see that these two closely related ways of reasoning give the same outcome. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful, that you'll subscribe if you haven't already, and that we'll see you again soon to discover more maths.